All right, let's get started. Hey, everyone. I uh, hope everybody's having the most wonderful day. It is wonderful to be back and back at part two of learning object-oriented programming by building a shopping cart. Real quick before we get started, um, if you're new here, hi, my name is Ramon. My friend Jess and I run this series of free boot camps. Right now, we are doing a JavaScript boot camp based on free code camps. Um, JavaScript certification. We're running a new curriculum, which is very exciting. And if you want to know more about our schedule, go to this website here, badwebsite.club. There you'll find everything. To, to As of tomorrow, we'll have two weeks left. But don't worry. If you want to catch up, everything is recorded on youtube.com forward slash at badwebsiteclub. There you find all of the recordings of these videos. And by joining, by joining our Discord, all of that, you are agreeing to abide by our code of conduct, bit.ly forward slash BWC slash dash, sorry, not slash, BW, BW, okay, let me start over, bit.ly forward slash BWC dash COC. Uh, if you see anything out of sorts, please let either myself or Jess know. Okay, so that's the prep work. Let's hop into our next lesson. Today will be just me, but don't worry, we'll be back at it again. Now, a little bit of less pair programming today. We're going to be doing more of what we did yesterday. Um, just to catch us up, we were in the middle of building our shopping cart functionality. Right now, we were getting a count of each product that's in our shopping cart. And the next thing we're going to do is start building the HTML, which will go into our show cart popover. Doesn't do anything just yet to show the number of items in the cart. So in order to do that, we're first going to create a new variable called current, current products. Let me try this again. <laughs> current product count span. So here we go. And if you have any questions, folks, uh, no, that's not what I meant to copy paste. <laughs> there we go. Uh, it's equals to, my goodness. Let me try that again. Const. Current product count span is equal to document dot get element by ID. And this ID is going to be dynamically built using template literals because we want to get the span that corresponds. <laughs> Eric says I'm a bit late. No, just just we'll be back tomorrow. Sorry about that. Just the, just me today. I hope that's okay. <laughs> Thanks for bearing with me, folks. Um and we're going to use the ID to get the product count span itself. So we're going to be using template literals to get product count for ID and then the product ID number. <laughs> Y'all are so kind and patient with me. So yeah, this is how we're grabbing the, I, the span for that specific product. Remember, we don't see that yet, but that's going to be shown when we click on show cart. So what we're going to be building here is the HTML that allows us to display how many of each item we've put into our shopping cart. So we've done it. We'll pat ourselves on the back, pat, pat, and we'll keep going. If you have any questions, please do not, um, please do not hesitate to ask. So what we're going to do is make our add item functionality vary depending on whether we already have at least one of that product in our cart or not. And we're going to use a ternary to check if the current product is already in the cart. And we're going to use undefined for both truthy and false expressions to avoid a syntax error. So we're going to create a ternary that checks if the current product is already in the cart. OK. I'm not sure I understand what this wants, but we'll figure it out. And if we get stuck, we can check our code and see uh, what it wants. So, OK. Um, if we want to find out if our shopping cart contains it, we want to go this.items.find. James saying, I think it's quite hard to build things blind with no ways to use console log to preview the cart. I mean, you can always modify the code a little bit to do that. But it's up to you. But you're, that's a good point. So this.items.find, we're going to find the item for whom the item dot people coming in. Hello. D is equals to a product dot ID. 
Question mark. I don't know. Let's find out. Oh, I think I made a, a bug here. Let's see what the code wants. We should check if our current product count is. That makes sense. <laughs> right. If we want to make sure that the item is already in the count, uh, the item is already in the cart, then the number should be bigger than one. That makes sense. Current product count is bigger than one question mark. True, false? I don't know what it wants. You should use undefined as the truthy expression. Okay. I'm not sure I understand. Oh, and use undefined as the falsy expression. Okay. This is a bit of a, I found this a bit of a vague state step, but the tests help us understand. We're going to get to why we're doing this. So let's keep going. Ah, see, we're going to be replacing undefined with different parts. So uh, for our truthy expression, removing the undefined, you need to update the text content of the current product count span to be the current product count followed by an X. Use a template literal to do so. Now, this one's a little bit confusing, but you know, we're... Here's the thing. Writing, writing lessons like this with an with an aim of making this approachable for everyone can be quite difficult. And this is after all a beta certification. So we're gonna find some bumps and bruises along the way and we'll just try and make more sense of them. So current product count span dot text content is equals to, if we do have them, now remember we use template literals and what was it again? Current product count followed by an X, cool, dollar sign, so current product count followed by an X. So we have, if it's bigger than one, we're going to have this many of it, otherwise undefined. I bet we're going to get to why we're doing that undefined. You should access the text content property of current product count span. Huh. Maybe they want to... Maybe you should access the text content property of current product count span. And so I see some folks in the chat saying that this is very confusing. And I don't know about you, but I found it, I find it very helpful sometimes to have confusing steps where I have to try and like make more, make more sense of it and try to like, as you saw, like sometimes we're not going to get it on the first try. And that's totally okay. So instead of using the ternary to assign the text content, we're gonna use a ternary to then assign that text content. So let's keep going. For our falsy expression, we're going to add a new HTML to our products container. So we're gonna replace our undefined with an addition assignment operator and template literal in syntax to add a div with the class set to product and the ID set to dessert ID and the inner HTML property of the, to the inner HTML property of the products container. Now let's build that sort of backward. Oh, do you know what I'm gonna do friends? I'm gonna write that up here just because I want to, I wanna be able to see the instructions while I write and then I'll copy and paste that, uh, cut and paste that code. Oh, I like what Stephen B is saying here. I've been trying to embrace this as a challenging but worthwhile exercise in reading confusing code. And sometimes you're going to be reading lots of confusing code. Maybe it's, and, and in several ways, it's good to start doing that earlier. So, okay, that's going to be products container, if I could spell that correctly, dot inner HTML. I'm going to be writing some HTML here using the addition assignment operator plus equals. Then we're going to have a template literal. And I have a div with a class set to product. You know what? I'm going to get rid of, give myself some space here. Cool. And inside the div, oh, nope, no, no, nothing inside the div. Uh, 
And inside our ID is going to be set to dessert dollar sign. And here we'll put the ID of the product. Now, right now, some folks are saying that it's very reasonable to be lost here. I agree 100%. So we're using the ternary here to say either put the product current product count span text content to be this many of the product, or we create a new div in here in our products container. So that passes. I'm going to give myself a pat pat, and we're going to keep going. Now, inside our div, we're going to add two P elements. We're going to set the text of the second P element to be the value of the price variable. The price, remember, we got here when we deconstructed the product yesterday. So in here, we've got two P elements. Wait, did they have a class? Nope, no class. OK, another P element. And inside here, we're going to have the price. And that's it. Nice. Let's keep going. So in our first P element, we're going to add a span element. And we're going to give that span a class of product count. I'm going to stop there. I'm just going to go do it. OK, and that's, wait, where did my instructions go? Sorry. And that span is going to have a class of product count and an ID of product count for ID ID. Cool. ID, product count for product ID, and it's product count, not product. My mistake. And we'll give our P element the text of the name variable. Here we're going to give it name. Whew. Okay. Let's see if we got it. Wow. Okay. That looks pretty good. Let's look at it again. We've got a span with the class product count. The ID is going to be product count for ID ID. And the content is the name of the product. And again, it's very difficult to look at all this without actually being able to see it. And this is part of the challenge of building stuff from the top down. But that's OK. We're going to get there. Now, we still need to implement more of our shopping class. But now we're going to start actually instantiating our shopping cart. And remember, I've been talking a lot about instantiating classes into objects. So we already know how to do this. In fact, this is outside of our class. Yep. We're going <laughs> to, this is going to be great because I've done it a ton of times yesterday. Const cart equals new shopping cart. Fabulous. Remember, folks, if you have any questions, bring them in. I'll bookmark them and we'll do some QA at the end. Nice. Let's keep going. Now, we're going to get access to all of the add to cart buttons that we did had it, blah, that we added to our DOM. These are these one here that we generated. So const add to cart buttons. Notice it's plural, and that's because we're going to use get element uh, sorry, document dot get elements by class name add to cart btn. So this isn't just going to give us access to one button. This is going to give us access to all of the buttons that say with the add to cart BTN class. You know what? Let me console log that. I'm curious what it'll show us. Add to cart BTNs. You ever curious about what something is? Hmm? It kind of looks like an array, but it's not quite one. And it kind of acts similar to one. But it is essentially something we can loop over to get access to all of those buttons.
Now, as we as we did yesterday, oh, sorry, as we're going to do now, we are going to use for each on our add to cart BTN. However, it's not an array. It's something called a collection. But what we can do is use the spread operator, which we've used before, to convert it into an array. We can do that with dot, 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 add to cart BTNs. Remember, this is the spread operator that lets us get all of those elements. And by putting them into square brackets, that's now an array for us. We're not going to do a callback yet. Cool. We're all done. Pat, pat. We'll keep going. And now we're going to write our callback. So it takes a BTN parameter. And we're going to add an event listener to each button. Add event listener. It'll take an event parameter itself. And that second callback should be empty. So what are we doing? We're looping through all of our buttons and putting in the event listener to add it to the cart. Now, hold on. <laughs> I forgot the event. That's silly of me. Of course, add event listener, click. And then the callback. There we go. Pat, pat. Sometimes we make mistakes. And inside our event listener callback, we're going to call add event on our cart. Remember, we instantiated a cart, but the parameter is going to, the argument is going to be the event.target.id. Now, just a quick reminder on this. The event is what happens when we click a specific button. The event's target is the button itself. And the event's target ID is the ID of the button. And you're probably wondering, OK, but how do we know what the button of the ID is? Scroll up with me real quick. Check it out. When we generated the buttons yesterday, we gave them an ID of the ID of the product. So that's how we know which product to add, because it's, a, it's linked to the product itself, to the button itself. However, the ID is going to be a string, so we need to convert it to a number. We know how to do that. Uh, number, I can't remember if it was capitalized. And the second argument needs to be our array of products. How does that look? We got it. Pat, pat. Let's keep going. Now, our cart, of course, is invisible on the web page. So now we're going to add the event listener to the cart ETN variable, which remember is our show cart button. Add event listener, click. And we will, adding an event listener, the callback does not need any parameters. OK, cool. So there's our callback. We're not going to use the event here. Let's keep going. Now, first, we're going to invert the value of is cart showing. If you remember, we defined a let is cart showing set to false. So if we want to invert a Boolean value, what we can do, so we want to toggle it. If it's true, set it to false. If it's false, set it to true. We can say is cart showing equals to is cart showing. Cool. So what's going on here? We take whatever the value of is cart showing is now and set it to be not that. That's because not true is false, and not false is true. And that way, we're inverting it. 
So that passes, pat pat, and now some questions. When using methods that we've defined in classes, will we always need to prepend the method with the name of the instance? Yeah, totally, because, and let me show you why, Stephen B, where's my card? If I do this, add item doesn't exist. We haven't defined a function in our in our script called add item. Add item is a method in the class shopping cart. Shop now we've instantiated a shopping cart object and assigned it to the variable cart. So cart is an object that has a method called add item. So just like we do document dot get elements by class name here. Document has a method called get elements by class name. We can't just do get elements by class name. We haven't defined that function, but the document object has that method. Just like cart, which is an instance of shopping cart, has the method add item. I do want to take a, this question as well from Monica. Why does it reference ID equals dessert ID instead of ID equals quotes dessert ID? Let's take a look. Huh. Monica, this looks like a typo to me. I would put it in quotes. I have no I, I have no idea why. Um I always put my IDs in quotes. I think this is a typo. Let me scroll up. Is it am I blocking it? No, I'm not. Ha! Uh, I think it's a typo. We we always have quotes in our IDs. My opinion. I could be wrong. Let's keep going. Now, uh, so hide cart span. We're going to assign its text content property to be the result of the ternary expression, which checks if is cart showing is true. So is cart showing question mark? We set it to either hide or go. Look, <gasps> look, 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 it's toggling now. Lisa says, um, I think it's because it's a, a template literal. I don't think so. I Because it's generating HTML that needs to have those quote marks. I really think it's a typo. And frankly, friends, I wouldn't get too caught up in it. Let's keep going. Okay. Now the cart container. Ah, we're gonna set its display. Cool, cool, cool. So cart container dot display dot style dot display. We're gonna change it to be uh ah ternary again. Is cart showing question mark block? or none. What we're doing is manually setting the CSS of the cart container to either show or not. Look, look. What happens now if I add items? <gasps> we can test it now. Let's start it over. Right now, there's no items. If I click on Add to Cart, now go on a journey with me here, folks. I'm going to add a vanilla cupcakes. First, it's going to get the product of cupcakes. Wait a minute. <gasps> Wait a minute. OK, do you all really want to go through this? Because I want to. I'm going to try something real quick. This could be a terrible idea. I'm going to use, oh, I hope this works. Oh, please, friends, let this work. I hope I can set something called a breakpoint. Stephen B, I see you saying interesting that the lack of quotation marks doesn't seem to affect the performance. I'm going to ask you a favor, and I know this is going to be annoying. I would recommend not to not to dig too deep into that. I know it's so annoying, and I apologize. Generally, you want to always put in those quote marks. Um, oh, please, let me see if I can grab that code. In case you're wondering what I'm doing here, I'm going, I'm looking at my developer tools to see 
if I can find that script, because I would love to find it. A free code camp. No. I want to be able to do something called putting in a breakpoint, and I'm afraid I might have to give up. Oh, it'd be so cool if I could. I'm so sorry, friends, to take us down a rabbit hole, but I would love for us to be able to step through this code a la, uh, similar to what we've been doing with um, Python Tutor. I'm going to try a couple more things, and then I'm going to have to give up, and I apologize. Oh, I'm so sad. Execute challenge saga. I agree, Stephen B. That's why I really want to, but I don't think I can. Well, hold on a second. What if? Okay, hear me out. This is kind of silly. Hello? Hmm? Why does console long? Oh, I'm in the class. Hold on. Bear with me, folks. I really want to step through this. No. Oh, I was really hoping that would work. Well, hold on, hold on. Let me try, <laughs> let me try this one more time and then I promise I'll stop. Okay, 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 okay. What if I step out? Oh, I did it. I did it, I did it, I did it, I did it. There it is. Ah, oh, tiny debugging tutorial. Okay, the code is kind of weird, but bear with me. Okay, okay. Oh, I forgot that I'm a genius. Okay, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> cool. Cool. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, 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 okay. Here's what's going to happen, okay? When I click on adding a... I'm going to click on add to cart. What I've done here is I've clicked on this to set up what's called a breakpoint, okay? Now watch what happens. When I click on add to cart, it's going to stop here. Oh, we are in for a treat, my friends. So now I know it looks a little bit different from our code. That's because the code has is, is something called compile. The code looks a little bit different. I really don't want to waste y'all's time in going into why it looks a little bit weirder, but I really want to step through this method because this method is a doozy. So we have the function add item, which takes two parameters, ID, you can see it there, and there's our array of products, okay? Now first, we go through our products and find the item, check it out. It looked, it found the item product ID with product with ID one. Remember ID is one, it's checking that the, uh, why am I, why am I pointing? It's checking that item ID is triple equals to or strict equally to ID, ID is one. So we have our product. The product is, check it out, category cupcake, ID one, name vanilla cupcakes, price $12.99. Cool. So we're here right now. Now we are decon deconstructing we're getting our name and our price. Cool. There's our name. There's our price. Then we have our empty object uh, total count per product. So now we're going to loop through each item of which there are, hold on, this shopping cart items. Look at what we got here. We have one vanilla cupcake in there. Notice this in this context is the shopping cart itself. Um, this items, so we're going to loop through each of them and assign to each dessert ID of the total count per product, total count per product, dessert ID, or zero plus one. Total count per product is, is for the ID one is one. So the current product count, currently undefined because we are on this line right now, we're going to step to the next one. It's going to be total count per product. Let's go look at total count per product. Right now is one because we are about to add one product. Boom. Current product count. You can, we can, it's a bit difficult to do on this tiny, on this zoomed in, but bear with me, folks. Look, current product, let me try that again. Current product count is one. Now we're going to get the current product count span, which is current product count for ID, dot concat ID. Sorry, it's compiled, but essentially we're getting product count for ID and then the number one. So we get that element. There. Current product can null. It doesn't exist yet because we haven't added any cupcakes yet. We are adding a cupcake now. So because, remember our code, um, the current 
we're doing that weird, we're doing that ternary thing. Current product count is bigger than one. Current product count is not bigger than one. So instead, what we're going to do is product container dot inner HTML, and then we're going to do our template literal to put in that div product count, the name of the thing, and the price. Next one. Now you probably saw our HTML get updated there. Now we've put in some uh, HTML into our product container. And then we've added a product. I know that this was a giant detour, friends, but I really wanted to make sure that we step through how to do this. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to pat myself on the back for that. My goodness. It was fun, though, huh? Let's keep going. Pat, <laughs> pat. Sorry to nerd out there. No, just so just asking where are these variables stored. I'm not sure I understand the question. What do you mean where? Um, when we um, when we declare a variable, we store a value in it. But what do you mean where is these JS variables stored? Could you clarify the question, please? Now we need to wait a way to access the total number of items in our cart. The best way to do this is to add another method to our shopping cart class rather than accessing the items array. Um, we'll add a get counts method to our shopping cart class. It should return the number of items in the items array. Cool. Um, I can do that, get counts. And all it should do is return this.items.length. There we go. Hope that's good. Yeah. Let's keep going. Oh, Stephen B's ask. Oh, actually, Stephen B, I'm gonna. I'm gonna I'm gonna bookmark that. Um, this tangent was so inf was informative to see values, but so quick I felt pretty lost. Sorry about that. What I wanted to do was make sure that we step through it. I'll show you. Um, I'll send out some recommendations for tutorials on how to use the DevTools debugger. Hint, MDN. Oh, Nutrisos is asking, const a equals 10, does, does it go into our browser or onto our hard drive? No, it goes into something called local memory, which is a, uh, a temporary value. Uh, it gets temporarily stored within that context. If we refresh our browser, that, va that value is gone. <laughs> Now we can update the total number of items on the web page. So we can assign our, let's see, total number of items dot text content is equals to cart get counts. Okay. Where does that get displayed? Is it here? Oh, total number of items. Cool. Nice. Cool. Pat, pat. Let's keep going. Now, we'll need to update the total price of the card when the user adds an item. So we're going to add a new method to our shopping cart class called calculate total. So we're going to declare a subtotal variable. Ooh. We're going to reduce our items to calculate the sum of the price property of each item in the array. So we're going to use total, which remember is the accumulator, and item, which is the current item we're looping through. And this is going to return total plus item.price. The second parameter is the initial value of the accumulator, which is 0. So that adds up all of the prices of our items in our shopping cart. Cool. Pat, pat. Let's keep going. Part of the total cost will include the tax, so we need to calculate that as well. Oh, so we're going to create a new method called calculate taxes. Oof, taxes. OK. So. This will take a parameter called amount. Cool. Don't think we'll implement it yet. No, we will not. Pat, pat. 
I don't know what it mount is yet, but I bet we'll find out. So we will return the value of the tax rate divided by 100 to convert it into a percent multiplied by the amount parameter. For clarity, wrap the tax rate divided by 100 in parentheses. Okay. So our tax rate, which we will divide by 100. Cool, because if our, if our, that makes sense, because if we want to multiply it by the amount, if we want to do 8%, let's say, in taxes, we want to do 0.08, because that's 8 divided by 100 times the amount. That's how you calculate a certain percent of an amount. Cool. Is that good? <gasps> it's not. You should divide the tax rate by 100 in your calculate taxes method. Oh, no. I forgot. Tax rate is a property of the shopping cart. That's why I need to use this. The this keyword, that is. Still not good. The calculate taxes should return the value of the tax rate divided by 100 multiplied by the amount parameter. Is it 1.100.0? Is this what you're doing? No. This dot tax rate divided by, oh my gosh. Tower of brilliance. No. Oh my goodness, Lisa, thank you. Oh my goodness. Y'all are so helpful. <gasps> Look at y'all. I'm missing the return keyword. No, just oh, Joe returned Stephen B. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Ah. Oh. 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 Jane, I'm going to bookmark your question. It is really good. Do not feel stupid. I tried to explain it yesterday and I think I failed. Um, and I apologize. I'll give it a try. Uh, but we'll do it in QA, okay? I want to show y'all how weird this is. This is one of the weirdest things about JavaScript. Here, let me show y'all. You might think, here, check this out. Console log 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2. Now, you might think. You might think that would give us 0 0.3. But look, it gives us 0 0.3 followed by what I would assume are like 20 zeros and a 4. This is called a quirk of JavaScript. And it's uh, it's a little bit weird to get used to, but essentially the problem is that how computers store decimal numbers as fractions. I'm going to be honest with you all. I have no idea why. It just turns out that some fractions can't be represented exactly as decimal fractions. So what we're going to do is to use the to fixed method on it. So uh, we're going to wrap wrap our calculations. Monica's asking, Monica's asking, is this why we round because JS can't math? Kinda. We're gonna use to fixed. Two. And what this does is it says, hey, make sure that this is two decimal places. It's going to round it to two decimal places. Let me show you again what happens if I do that. Console log zero, whoops, 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2. I'm just going to wrap this in parentheses. Now it's 0 0.30. If I do it to fixed one, it's 0 0.3. If I do it to five, it's 0 0.3 followed by four zeros. If I do it to zero, well, then it just rounds it to zero. Cool. So now we've rounded it to two decimal points. Excuse me. Pat, pat. Let's keep going. Oh, cool. So to fixed makes it so that to 
two fixed does it so that uh, this number is turned into a string. So we actually want to turn this number back into a number using parse float. So now we're going to take this fixed rounded number back into a number. So we're turning a number into a string back into a number. And this way we guarantee that we've got a number. Now that we've done that, we're going to declare a variable called tax. And we're going to call the calculate taxes method. Stephen B, this might go a little bit into what you were talking about before. We can call calculate taxes. However, there is no method called ta calculate taxes in the local scope. That's because calculate ta taxes is a method on the shopping cart. So we need to call this dot calculate taxes. And the amount is going to be that subtotal. Amazing. Pat, pat. Let's keep going. Now, the total amount that we're going to pay is going to be the sum of subtotal plus tax. And then we're good. Pat, pat. Let's keep going. After having calculated that total, now we're going to update some HTML. Text content equals the value of the subtotals to a fixed two decimal places. And we're going to use template literals to add a dollar sign. So dollar sign first, and then subtotal two fixed with two decimal places. We haven't called this method yet, so we can't test it. But now we're putting in that content, hey, this is how much the subtotal is. Pat, pat. Stephen B, I'm going to bookmark your question for later, but the short answer is yes. Now, just like we did with it, cart subtotal, we're going to uh, update the cart taxes and the cart total. These are these ones here. So we'll do that. Cart taxes dot text content. Text to fixed to. And the same goes for cart total text content. Two fixed two semicolon. Did it wrong. You should call the two fixed method on the total variable. Passing two is an argument. Remember to use the this keyword. Oh, oh, of course, because the total is a property of our shopping cart. I'm silly. There we go. Pat, pat. My bad. And finally, we're going to return the value of the total property. Cool. So calculate total, does the calculations, stores the total, displays the values, and then returns this dot total. Feeling pretty good about this, pat, pat. Not this, this, I mean the, the what we've written. <laughs> I'm being silly, don't mind me. Now, when we, what? We call cart dot calculate total when we've added an item to our cart. Let's give it a try. Check it out. 1299. 
what was the tax rate again? 8.25, so I guess 8.25, sorry, 107 is 8.25% 8 of 1299. I will believe that. And 1299 plus 107 is 1406. My goodness, look at us just powering through this, huh? Pat, pat. And the last feature is to allow users to clear their cart. Cool. Adding a method. Now, first we're going to if the this.items. Now, how do we check if something is empty? We'll go with this.items.length is equals to zero. And if it is, we will just use an alert to say your shopping, I'm spelling this wrong, shopping cart is already empty. And we will return from the function. We're not returning anything, we're just getting out of the function. Now, Now, hold on a second. Let's see if this. Remember that zero is a falsy value, so you can use the not operator to check the array is empty. So like this. There we go. Submit and go to the next challenge. Cool. Pat, pat. Ooh, I didn't know this. The browsers have a built-in confirm function, which displays a confirmation prompt to display to the user. So we'll declare a variable, const is cart cleared, and assign it the value of confirm. And I'm, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to copy the string. I realize I have a typo. I realize I have a typo. Here we go. Of course, we can't try it yet. And I just bet it's going to display a little pop-up with a little yes or no. Pat, Pat. We're going to do a couple more of these because I do want to leave you all with some homework. So I'm going to do this last one, and then I'll leave the rest of you all, and we'll do some Q&A. So we only want to clear the cart if the user confirms. So this is cart cleared is going to give us a Boolean. So I'm going to create an if statement that checks if the user confirmed the prompt. If we do, we'll set the items property back to an empty array and set the total property to zero. So if is cart cleared, we will set items to be an empty array. And this.total is now zero. Amazing. Let's pat pat and take a look at homework. And I'm sorry to leave you all here. I think it's good to have a little bit. It's just three steps. Yeah. There's nothing in here that I believe you will need to know for tomorrow's intermediate uh, object-oriented programming session. Um, so homework is do these three. Take a step back. We've just done two straight days of object-oriented programming, and it's a lot. So please don't worry if not everything clicks. Give yourself the time to go through these. Let's go through some questions. OK, Stephen B asks, recommendations about tutorials on how to use the DevTools debugger. Yeah, sorry. I kind of gave you all like a real fast crash course through it. And I do apologize. Uh, this is not what I'm looking for. Uh... Is this it? Browser developer tools, JavaScript debugger. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here's a link to this. Highly, highly, highly recommend this. Oh, that's a great question, Monica. I'm going to bookmark that as well. Check this uh, tutorial out. Um, I'm sure Free Code Camp's blog has a couple as, that, as well that are really, really good. So 
Jane's asking, what is the difference between a method and a function? I please, please, Jane, please never, ever feel bad for asking these things. Oftentimes I don't know something and I, you know, the, these things are like, you can't memorize these things. So please never feel bad for asking. Lisa actually get, did a really good job of this. A method is a function that you can only access through a class. So it's a function that is attached to a class. And that is exactly it. All fun. Let me try this. All methods are functions, but not all functions are methods. Methods are functions that we define in a class or an object that can be only called in that object or class. CPB says, it seems reasonable to rule to use this when it's a property defined in the constructor with this, and two, it's a method defined in the same class as you're currently working in. Yes, this, this can be used differently in different contexts. In the context of a class, we're going to be using this for properties and construct and properties and methods. Monica's asking, does confirm create a pop-up? Yes. Yes, it does. It's gonna show a little like like the alert. It'll show that. Monica's asking, if we don't have time to fully catch up, what's the most helpful for us to review before intermediate? Um, how to define a class, how to instantiate a class, methods, properties, the this keyword. And Stephen B says, the final step is like a toe wetting of bind, and I don't see that in the intro of the next lesson. Is it worth getting into? Have a look at it, okay? So the this, what we need to do is use this, which we don't have access to from within the class, on an element. So what we're going to do is pass cart.clearcut.com bind cart as the callback. And I know it's a little bit weird. Have a brief, brief look at the bind function. I wouldn't worry too much about it. And tomorrow we will do, we will make sure that y'all get it fully. So no, I wouldn't, don't dive into it too much is my opinion. I think we're good for today. If we don't have any more questions, I will let y'all go. Great job on getting through object-oriented programming today. I know that not everything clicked, but I would advise having patience. I would advise being kind to yourselves. And as always, ask questions either here or on Discord. Stephen B and I finally managed to um, um, make the make the the question that he was asking that they were asking yesterday click. And thank you so much, Stephen, for being so patient with me. Um, hey, I'll see y'all tomorrow. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and take care. Bye for now.